Thanks for watching Afternoon Live. Our next guest was at the top of his game as a fitness influencer in Los Angeles when a motorcycle accident nearly cost him his life. His recovery is nothing short of a miracle. He joins us now with a look at his new book, Rebuilding Adam. We welcome Adam El Nakave. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So let's go back in time to before the accident. Tell me about your life. You were really pursuing fitness influencer as your career at that point. Yeah, yeah. I had a bunch of followers and people supporting me and training others and groups and people and I love fitness so much that in the end I started to develop my own my own fitness app mm. that it kind of interconnected people when they go to the gym there's like a GPS driven around it and that whole platform was set to launch in the end of the start of July and then May I went on a trip with my best friend to Thailand we wanted to celebrate our new chapters in life, graduating yeah. college, and taking on that next chapter. And then one moment, I just had a motorcycle accident, and then my whole world just flipped upside Everything down. Everything changed. This is Everything. back in 2018 that this 2018, happened? 2018, yes. So the crash was, I mean, so horrific. The doctors yeah. didn't think you were even going to survive at a certain point. Yeah, they told my parents that I'd remain in a vegetative state, I'd be paralyzed, I'd be unable to speak, wow. hospice, the whole nine yards. So you obviously fought through, and how did you get back to the U.S.? Would you have to be transported somehow? Yeah, we contacted the medical insurance provider for us, mm -hmm. and they sent over a plane, because my wow. parents were, I was in a coma for 10 days. Yeah. So my parents were begging for them to send me transport to America where yeah. there's proper medicinal care. So they ended up sending an uh, airplane but with no proper ventilated oxygen in it and I was still in a coma oh at that goodness. point. And it was, so we elevated and once we got up to the certain level of the, of the flight, my heart started racing rapidly. Wow. So we had to make an emergency stop in Taiwan. Wow. So we went from Thailand to Taiwan and the airplane landing was so extravagantly un unanticipated mm -hmm. that as we got off the airplane to the hospital to the nearest hospital my parents saw the wheel off the airplane had popped off oh my goodness yeah what a series of events and your parents I mean your whole family is literally fighting for your life this yeah. entire time so you do get back to the US you get proper Eventually. medical care yeah, yeah. after all that what a journey yeah. do you have any memory of the early days of coming out of the coma you know my real memories started coming back to me since that collision. Mm -hmm. It took about three and a half months. Wow. I was blank. Where you just have that part of your life is missing. Yeah, the first 20% of my written story is our sources that are coming from my parents, yeah. my best friend, my aunts, my uncles. Wow. So they're, they're basically telling the beginning of my story upon the collision. How beautiful that they all can contribute in this way, and then you've put it all together in a book now. Exactly. Where you literally are starting from scratch, relearning every Everything. bodily function that there is. What was that like to kind of realize? Could you understand in your own mind what was going on at that point? You know, there's a word in my book that I just keep using over and over again. It's dreamlike state. Mm. And I was consistently in a dreamlike state yeah. because I used to be this big, strong bodybuilder that was the strongest in the gym, mm -hmm. any gym that I went to. And then when I come back, I have one arm that's set to be paralyzed, a leg set to be paralyzed. I'm in, I'm wearing a helmet at the gym now mm -hmm. to protect my skull that was broken. Uh, I needed a wheelchair, a cane to assist me. The very, f the, the very first day back, the front desk at the gym said to my mom that carried me to the gym, are you sure he's gonna be okay at the gym? Mm -hmm. They said this about me once lifting 140 pound dumbbells right they're saying is he going to be okay you it know so like my whole world flipped a totally down. different person absolutely a whole different life so you i mean obviously put so much effort into physical therapy to get you to this point that you're at now what is the mental journey like going through all of that the mental journey is is developed through different types of emotions mm -hmm. the biggest one is doubt yeah. and and then frustration and then just su being surprised just I couldn't believe because I never been in an injury before I never yeah. broken an arm a leg never had any issue no had stitches and here I am 
with a broken skull and all this this new chapter an entirely new life just been catapulted me to a whole new journey and that's why I wrote this story because I wanted to tell people no matter what challenges you have in life if it's an injury or medicinal or family oriented or relationships or anything my biggest voice to say to them is to never give up on yourself always try because you only get one life mm -hmm. and you have to push yourself to achieve whatever you may possibly achieve yeah you're a great example of overcoming just about anything literally tell me about the beginnings of the book where you were just basically journaling that was kind of the starting point of all this yeah my very first day at the um, rehab center that I was going to for about a year my OT counselor said to me, you know, you may suffer memory issues the rest of your life. You should start journaling to help you mem memorize, you know, different tasks in your life, mm -hmm. your friends' names, your parents, wow. your whatever you, had whatever you had to do, eating, sleeping, whatever. Just write down whatever your thoughts are and let it develop. And my very first entry that's in this book, it says, I miss the old me. Because that was the only thing at the moment, my first entry, was that I can think of. Just my old self, my old bodybuilding self that was conquering the world. Right. You know? Let's talk more man. about your family that's helped you through all this. I know your mom is a big deal to you. Look at this amazing photo of you guys. What is your bond like now? I imagine it's just totally unstoppable. You know, when people grow up, they usually have the motivation to be a success, whether it's financial or just freedom to travel and living the dreams of their lives. Mm -hmm. After my injury and in witnessing what my mother and my father and my sister and my friends did for me, yeah. now my goal in life is coupled with not only for my own self, but for them. Yeah. I want to show them as a thank you because you took care of me and insisted for me to recover let me show you what I'm capable of to recover for you and to help pursue and show you yeah. and also anyone else in life that wants to recover and gain certain aspects in their lives, show them that it's possible and yeah. prosper that way. And a great example to inspire so many other people. Hey, we're so glad that you found some time to spend with us today. Thank you so much for sharing your story with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The book, again, is Rebuilding Adam, and we'll have more information on our website at katu.com. We'll be right back with more Afternoon Live right after this. First, let's check in with Helen in AM Northwest. Hey, Hannah.